in Jesus name we pray tonight is our first night uh, revival night and I believe that the Lord will touch every one of us miraculously tremendously in Jesus name tonight we have a message entitled empowered to heal and to deliver this year you'll be an instrument in the hand of the Lord I believe something will be transferred into your life and then when the message eventually comes and you are now to receive that power yourself you will be empowered you will go out from this place to heal and you'll go out from this place to deliver you will never be the same again I want you to make up your mind that this year things are going to happen through you and these testimonies you are hearing will just be a stepping stone for you to look ahead and say if God can do that in that situation and through that program in the programs you are going to hold in your locality in your region in your state in your nation we're going to hear similar stories concerning your ministry this 98 and you will have a breakthrough as well i believe it has started already you will know it in your life praise the lord shall we rise up the lord is able to do much more in your own life and is able to do much more through you as well and as you look up to the lord today you'll tell the lord to empower you tell the lord to anoint you and tell the lord to use you in this coming year so that you will do great things and exploits for the glory of his name In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you very much. We thank you for your goodness. We praise you because you are a faithful God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped. We are asking, O oh Lord, tonight, you meet your people at the points of their needs in Jesus' name. We are ministers of the gospel, preachers of your word. And we gather together here so that you can fill us, energize us, equip us, empower us, so that as we go back to our various nations and our various regions and states, you will do mighty and great things through us. I'm asking, O oh Lord, that tonight you will shower your power down upon every brother and sister so that we'll do more for the Lord in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, that none of us will miss you tonight. For ourselves personally, for our families, for our congregations, and for the ministries you have granted and given unto us. We're praying, O oh Lord, you will touch, you will transform us, and transform our way of ministering in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself in every life. Do mighty and wonderful things. We thank you because we know you have answered. We'll see the result and the manifestation. In Jesus' name we pray. Now tonight, as I told you, I'm speaking on empowered to heal and to deliver. I need to remind you once again, I've said this before in our Congress, that when messages like this are given, in a congress in a leaders meeting it is not just to prepare you to receive uh, the touch of the lord it is to prepare you to minister unto other people and therefore you should look beyond just receiving a blessing and you should look into the possibility of becoming a blessing yourself in luke chapter 10 
verse 1, Luke 10, 1. After these things, the Lord appeared, appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. In verse 9, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Verse 17, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. In a leader's meeting like this, you want to read, analyze, understand, apply those verses once again. Even though they are verses that are very simple and they are things you know already. But will you please notice that these 70 disciples were lower than the 12 apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we are told he appointed them and he sent them forth. The first lesson you learn there is like, like he had earlier appointed the 12 and gave them power. He appointed the 70 and he gave them the same power. Different titles, different position, different responsibilities. And yet because they were sent out, appointed they were given the same power. Don't you learn from that? That when God sends out an apostle, he gives him power. When he sends out a deacon, he gives him power. When he sends out a soul winner, he gives him power. Which means then, you might not even be an apostle. And you might not be an overseer. You may not be a state overseer or a national overseer. But the hand of the Lord is upon you. And he has sent you out to get something done. And something will be done in Jesus' name. Then he sent them two by two. That means you have 70 people. He paired them up. How many pairs, how many groups do you have going out? Again, 35. But do you see he told them? As you go out, heal the sick that are therein. We learn another lesson there. All those 35 groups that were sent out, they received the same commission. Preach the same Christ. Emphasize the same truth. Manifest the same power. In the mind of God, there is no difference with this group or this group, or that group. All the groups that were sent out were given the same commission, were given the same power that every one of them should heal the sick and deliver the oppressed. We learn another lesson. They all came back, all the 35 groups, and then listening to their testimony, they said, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name which means there was no failure in all the 35 groups we didn't even have 33 groups doing well and only two groups saying we don't understand the field we went to was so difficult we couldn't get anything done but all the 35 groups they came back and they had the same testimony isn't that an indication that as we are all here now and will be commissioned by the Lord, empowered by the Lord, we will go to different, different places. And I believe as we come back, if Jesus tarries another time, every one of us shall have a testimony. Yeah. And we should be able to say, we've gone out as group A is giving testimony, group B should be giving testimony until the last group, every one of us should be given testimonies because when the Lord commands, he also energizes and he empowers. And the Bible says that our God remains the same. He has not changed. And Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the same yesterday and today 
and forever. You'll find him the same in your life and ministry in Jesus' name. There are three points we're going to quickly talk about. Number one, authorized to heal and to deliver. Authorized to heal and to deliver. Number two, anointed to heal and to deliver. And then number three, approved of God by miracles. Authorized, anointed, approved. Now we look at number one. Authorized to heal and to deliver. And uh, you'll find in the message I'm giving tonight that the points are very, very simple. They're very simple because uh, when God wants to use you, he doesn't become complicated. And it doesn't become so esoteric. And uh, so difficult, so much high above you that you say, I can't understand. I can't grasp that. I can't even think of uh, being able to do that myself. They're very, very simple things. Another thing I need to tell you, you'll find out when I'm uh, giving a message like this, I will say one, two, three, four, and I might go up to seven. The reason I do that is that uh, when you have those steps, if you are going to climb to a story building, for example, if we just put a plank without any step that you can put your legs upon, it will be very, very difficult even to come down from the top, you'll slide down and you could enjoy yourself. And how are you going to get up there without those steps? So we make it very simple and we create or we fashion, fabricate a kind of staircase and you take a small step and the next small step and the next small step and before you know what you're already in the story building and so that's the reason i'm going to break everything down in little little chunks so that you'll be able to take a little at a time and i am praying really seriously praying that the place god has taken me he will take you there too now we're talking about authorized to heal and to deliver we're looking at matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 10 reading from verse 1 matthew 10 1 it says and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease i told you we're going to be very simple he called the 12 disciples some of them had started following him from matthew chapter 4 but matthew himself was called in matthew chapter 9. do you see the point we're making here the ones that came in matthew chapter 4 and the ones that came in Matthew chapter 9, even though they came one before the other, he called all of them together and he gave them the same power. What a revelation. And you know he told the parable because there's another parable where it says he appointed some at the third hour, some at the sixth hour, some at the ninth hour, some at the eleventh hour, and at the end of the day, he gave each of them the same penny. Don't you understand that all of us here, we didn't come into the church, into the gospel, into the kingdom, and not that, uh, at the same time. Maybe there are some people here, you came in chapter 4. And some of you people here, you came in chapter 9. And the Lord is bringing everybody together. And he's saying, you came before, you have just come. We are all in the ministry. And then he gives everyone the power and the authority. And he says, you go and cast out devils. And you go and heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases in verse 7 and as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick now obviously the lord jesus christ a good master he wouldn't tell them something impossible to do 
If he commanded it, it means it's possible to do it. He said, heal the sick. How could he do that? Because he had given them the power. He had given them the authority. And now he said, you've got it. Go out there, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Can you see here that there are categories? When we talk about ministering, you are healing the sick. You are delivering the oppressed. Can you see it says, heal the sick. There are sicknesses that come with pain. There are sicknesses that come with suffering. It said that category, deal with it, heal the sick. Then it says, cleanse the lepers. There are some other sicknesses that come, and really you don't even feel the pain, and the sickness will be eating away the finger, and eating away the toes, and eating away the parts of the body, because those parts of the body, they lose sensitivity, and they lose uh, feeling. And it says, the ones that are sick and they have the pain, heal them. The ones that are sick and they don't even feel the symptom and they don't even feel anything scratching them and yet the disease is eating them up, heal them. There's another category now and it says, raise the dead. You see how Jesus was very, very systematic and he was covering every area of human need and human problem. And then he said, apart from the sick feeling the pains, apart from the lepers who may not even feel any pain at all, and yet their uh, their thumbs or whatever is uh, being eaten up, and apart from the people that are dead that you need to raise up, there are some people their problems is of the evil spirit. When you get there, cast out the devils, and he says, freely you have received, and freely give. He was giving them authority. And in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. In verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Again, these are verses we have learned, we have read about. But you know, when you are talking about signs, in the Old Testament, Signs, when you talk about signs, you are thinking about Moses. Because the Bible says there was no prophet like that man in the land of Israel at that time that God walked mightily through and then we have signs associated with his name. And then you come on to the time of the prophets and now you are thinking about people like Isaiah. You know, those are not ordinary prophets. Those are highly placed uh, prophets in the land of Israel and you have signs and wonders associated with their names. You know something? What was extraordinary in the Old Testament becomes ordinary in the New Testament. What was uncommon in the Old Testament becomes common ordinary available in the new testament instead of only the moses instead of only the elijah instead of only the jeremiah instead of only the isaiah of the old testament having the signs and the wonders now it's made available to everybody these signs shall follow them that believe the people that believe now, what was extraordinary in the olden days becomes ordinary and common and available to everybody now if you will just believe. And then it says, in my name shall they cast out devils. There is no time, but in the little time we have, it was the name of Jehovah in the Old Testament. It was a great I am that I am in the Old Testament. It was a God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the Old Testament. But now, Christ came. They appointed the anointed one and the Messiah. And because he came, he defeated the devil. You know the passage I'm reading to you is on the other side of the cross. The passage I'm reading to you, Christ had gone to the cross already. He had died on the cross. He was buried. He rose up. It's on resurrection ground. And as he came and brought the people and they saw the risen Christ, the glorified Christ on resurrection ground, he said, now it is finished. The devil has been given a spiritual technical knockdown, knock out and knock off. 
and now there is no problem at all and my name now at the mention of that name every knee shall bow stretch out your hand i give you the name i give you the name i give you the name go everywhere now in my name you will cast out devil yeah. and in my name you will heal the sick yeah. and then it says you will even speak in new tongues and you'll take off serpents and if you drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt you you will lay these your hands on the sick and the sick will recover he was giving them authority and as he gave them the authority they accepted that authority and if you will accept that authority too it will work in your life it will work in your ministry in john chapter 12 chapter 14 rather john chapter 14 and in verse 12 verily verily i say unto you now this is not the first time you're hearing jesus say verily verily whenever jesus wanted to say something irrevocable whenever he wanted to say something that even though heaven and earth may pass away, that thing cannot be touched, that thing cannot be changed, that thing cannot be reversed. He will start by saying, verily, verily. Isn't that what he said when he was showing the necessity of being born again? Verily, verily, I say unto you. And now he comes and he's telling us something that is unchangeable. He's telling us something that is irreversible. Verily, verily, I say unto you, not unto them, unto you, the people that were before him. And what he said unto them, he's saying unto you today, he that believeth on me. Do you believe? He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. In fact, and greater works than these shall he do, because, because, I said because, I go unto my father. What does that mean? I go unto my father. You know, the average person will say, well, that means he was going to heaven. I go unto my father. It's true. He was going to the father. But you know, he said, you will do these works and you will do greater works and he associated that with because i go to my father the implication is very clear i'm going to the father i'll be sitting on the throne of power and as i'm sitting down there you will be representing me on earth here and anything you say here i will tell the father to confirm it and therefore anytime you pray don't think about your feeling Anytime you pray, don't think about whether you are passing for 40 days or not. Anytime you pray, don't think about yourself. Just think about me that we're two, we're working together. You are in me, and I am in you, and I'm representing you there by the right hand side of the Father. And therefore, when you command the sickness to go, or you command the uh, evil spirits to go, remember, it will happen because I go to the Father. And everything you say here, I will confirm it over there. You see, when you pray for the sick, you don't think about yourself. You don't think about whether you are feeling nice or you are feeling powerful or feeling mighty. What you are telling the Lord, it will happen in Jesus' name. Now, let me quickly give you seven things before I go to point two. While you are exercising this authority over diseases and demons, number one, fix your eyes on Jesus, not on the seriousness of the sickness fix your eyes on jesus do not fix your eyes on the seriousness of the sickness and the testimony that our brother gave he told you of the man that had elephantiasis big legs not only that the legs were rotting not only that literal maggots were coming out of the leg and uh, as the fellow the man was sitting there and i was on the platform and i had finished preaching and it became it came now to the time for jesus to heal the person i'm not the one going to heal the person so i have no problem all i do is that jesus will use my mouth and he will use my understanding and i pronounce the word and then he confirms it 
you fix your eyes on the lord you don't fix your eyes on the problem and immediately we pronounce the word the people opened their eyes the rotting leg dried up everything became healed within not all five minutes all the maggots were completely dried up everything was okay the man stood up and came to the platform to testify it will happen in your ministry yeah. number two set your mind on his love and his faithfulness set your mind on his love and faithfulness he loves the people you are ministering to he doesn't want them to suffer and because he does not want them to suffer that's why he's going to do what he's going to do don't think about yourself fix your mind set your mind on his love his faithfulness number three neglect fear and feeling and let faith hold firm to the unfailing promises of god just overlook the fear and the feeling and let faith hold firm to the unfailing promises of god number four don't even think about the unbelief of some of the people don't even think about that whenever you are praying for the people don't say what if some of these people don't believe that's not your problem leave that between them and god have you realized when Naaman came to Elisha? And when he came, Elisha said, he sent his servant to say, go and tell that man to dip himself in Jordan. How many times? Seven times. His flesh will come again. Did Naaman have great, great faith? Did he have great faith? He got angry. He said, what does that man mean? He doesn't know my position. I thought he will come out and he will put his hand in that place. And what was he talking about? For me to go into Jordan, Abana and Fapa, are they not better rivers than Jordan? I will not do that. And you know the man was angry. He didn't have the kind of faith you are thinking about. But you know Elisha, Elisha just sat down and he relaxed his mind. Because that was the word of the Lord. Tell the man whether he believes or not, let him do what I said he should do. And go into Jordan and dip himself there seven times. Everything will be all right. And then the servants, they came to Naaman and they said, Master, why are you angry? If this man had told you to do something uh, greater, wouldn't you have done that? And they convinced the man. And you can picture the thing. If you were to write a story on that, a news story to give the newspaper people on that, you can put some things and, you know, embellish the thing a little. Let me embellish it for you. I see the man saying, okay, that's all right. I will go back there. And if I dip myself seven times in that Jordan and the thing does not happen, I'm going to show these people that there's no God in Israel. They said, just do it. And then he was pounding and he was, uh, you know, grudgingly going in and he went in the first time and looked at his body and said you know what i told you you see it now and second time and third time and fourth time that man did not have a great great faith at the seventh time what happened everything was okay don't worry about their faith the lord has sent you to give them the healing and to give them the deliverance you be faithful to the lord and the lord will heal them in jesus name number five now have confidence in the exalted conquering name of jesus christ at the mention of that name every knee shall bow and all tongues will confess that jesus is the christ number six speak the word of authority for the mountain to move without doubting you are the one to believe all those people you are ministering to they'll be at different levels of receptivity and different levels of accepting what you are saying but you make sure that you believe and you speak the word of authority to that mountain to move and it will move will it move because that's what the lord has said and then number seven obey the lord while ministering obey the lord while ministering but be very careful now don't do anything in the flesh don't do anything in the flesh just be submissive to the hand of the lord 
under the mighty anointing and the spirit of the Lord. Just do step by step what he tells you to do. They may be very, very simple things, but do them, say them. And then you will find that the Lord will honor himself. He will glorify himself in Jesus' name. Point number two now, anointed to heal and to deliver. Anointed to heal and to deliver. There is authority. There is anointing. In um, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Uh, do you realize something? That Jesus Christ got to the synagogue. When he got to the synagogue, they called upon him to come and read, and they gave to him the book of Isaiah. And what he read here had been written about 700 years before Jesus came to the synagogue. He opened it, and the words that had been written 700 years before, he read those words as if they were fresh, coming from the mouth of the Lord that very day. Do you see a secret there? If God is going to use you, in the ministry of healing the sick and delivering the oppressed, you will take the word of God. Don't mind that it had been written 700 years before, 2,000 years before, 3,000 years before. You will take that word, you will read it with meaning, you will read it with application, and you will read it fresh, as if the Lord was giving you that very time that's the secret you will take the word and you will know that this is written concerning you that the lord had appointed you and the lord had authorized you and this is what he anointed you to do and then it says in verse uh, in verse 20 and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. You see, there is the appointed day when the scripture that had been written many years before comes into your life. And then you take hold of that and it has a personal, relevant application to your life at that very time. And then you take the promises of God, you take them from the many years they have been written and then you possess them in the now. He was anointed and the anointing then brought about the healing of the sick. And the delivering of the, the deliverance of the afflicted in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You need to also understand. That as Christ was anointed, even so today, you can be anointed with the Holy Ghost. You get saved, born again. You get sanctified, purified. And then you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. And that means you are anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And as he healed the sick with that anointing, so you can heal the sick with that anointing. As he delivered the oppressed, as he wrought signs and wonders, so you can do the same by that same anointing. Because he has promised and he has given us the same anointing with the Holy Ghost and with power to do exploits for him. Now because uh, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, sometimes there are people that have difficulty uh, matching themselves with what he did. But there should be no difficulty because he said, what I do, you will do. But now, let's pick up a man. 
And let us see now the way anointing works. I told you that we're going to simplify the matter so that by the grace of God, you'll be able to use that anointing God has given you. I'm assuming, I'm accepting, he has given you the anointing already. I said he has given you the anointing already. But you know there are people that may have anointing, but they don't know how to operate. They do not know how to exercise the anointing that has been given to them. That's the reason now we're going to examine a passage of scripture in the Old Testament. And you are going to look at some points there that will show you how the anointing in your own life will also be uh, working and delivering the oppressed. We come to 1 Samuel and we come to chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and in verse 13 then Samuel took the horn and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward there we are you find that uh, in the Old Testament they will pour oil on them and that was the anointing and then as a result of that, the Holy Spirit came upon David. But as you come to the New Testament, you don't find that. You don't find that Jesus Christ needed oil to be poured upon him. No, he went into the water of baptism. And as he was coming out, the Holy Spirit like a dove descended upon him. And a voice said, here is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and then we are told immediately after that he went in the power of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and then we are told after the temptation he came back in the power of the spirit you don't find any oil there you think about Paul the Apostle, and you don't find anybody pouring oil upon him. You think about the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, Peter, James, John, and the rest of them. You don't find anybody pouring oil on them. You understand now, what was symbolic in the Old Testament received its reality in the New Testament. And so now you are not in the Old Testament to be looking for literal oil for somebody to pour upon you so that you can have anointing, so that you'll be able to heal the sick. It was symbolic then. It is real now. So then, the number one thing you want to notice, you want to note now under the anointing, is that there is the real experience of the Holy Ghost anointing. Only symbolized in the Old Testament, by the pouring of the anointing oil. But do you know something? After that, before that anointing, we don't find the miraculous things that happened through the ministry of David. We don't find that before. Because we're told in verse 14, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord, permitted by the Lord, allowed by the Lord, troubled him. And then you know the story, read on your own later, in verses 16 all through to verse 18. They wanted a man that will be able to play the harp and that will come and play uh, with real skill, ability, so that the evil spirit will depart from Saul. In uh, verse 23, and it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God for, uh, was upon Saul, that David took an harp, and played with his hand so Saul was refreshed and he was well and the evil spirit departed from him remember we're learning how to exercise the anointing do you understand here that although David this point number two now had known how to play the harp before the anointing came the skill was there the ability to play was there. We do not have any record. That before the anointing came upon him, he played that harp to deliver somebody being oppressed by the devil. The skill was there, but that skill did not do any exploit for the Lord. When the anointing comes upon you, the ordinary gifts and skills you had before now can accomplish and do extraordinary things. Because the anointing, will take the ordinary speech you have, 
the ordinary understanding you have, the ordinary faith you have, the ordinary ability you have, and plus the anointing will now accomplish extraordinary things. Then you come on to chapter 17. In chapter 17, we come to the challenge of defeating Goliath. That challenge came after the anointing. When, if you are really looking for the anointing, and you want the anointing of the Lord upon your life, understand, once the anointing comes upon your life, greater challenges are going to come to you too. You'll just discover that the challenges are there. And I need to tell you now ahead of time, if you really want anointing, that is the anointing God has given you for God to activate that, and for God to energize you, you must understand that God will use some things to push you out. When I say push you out, I don't mean he will push you out of Israel, out of the kingdom of God. You know, David received the anointing. He went back to the field to take care of the sheep of his father. And then there was a battle being fought. And the father called him and pushed him out. The father didn't know. He was giving him a challenge, an open door. Go and use the anointing that you have. He just said, go and see your brothers. How they do on the battlefield. And because he was obedient, he went. But God was opening a door that the anointing should not be in vain. The anointing will not just be there. There is a challenge waiting for you. Now that you have got the anointing, go out to the field and get the job done. And so opportunities will come in disguise of problems in disguise from it will look as if it's a state overseer sending you go and do that it will look as if it's a region overseer saying go and do that and if you are the type that will say no i will not do that no i don't want to be pushed around you will not have chance to use the anointing but if you will do like david when the father said go and do that and you go to do that you'll find that the anointing will begin to operate in jesus name and now, number four, David's anointing could have become ineffective. Surprisingly, David's anointing could have become ineffective, number one, if he allowed his older brother's comment and criticism to hinder him. What have you come to do here? I know the pride of your heart. With whom did you leave uh, that chief? And he just replied, Am I here ordinarily? Is there not a cause? Is there not a ministry? Is it not for the operating of the anointing? Leave me alone. You know, they spoke to one another and said, you know, brothers together. And, but if you had allowed the criticism and the comments, the anointing will not be useful. Number two, if you had accepted Saul's armor. Oh, my son, put on this heavy thing. And he tried it and he said, I've not tried this before. And you will find that Saul's armor many, many times will not work with the anointing. The armor that the people use that don't have any anointing and it is not helping them. If you put that on, you will see that it's a hindrance rather than it's around and being a help. And then if he had walked by sight, if he had been terrified by the stature of Goliath, the language of Goliath, the threat of Goliath, the armor of Goliath, the shield bearer, armor bearer of Goliath, or the curse of Goliath. If he had been terrified, he wouldn't have been able to use the anointing. I'm telling you something then. When you go out and you want to make use of the anointing that the Lord has put upon your life, you will not mind what people say. What people think about you, you will just do what the Lord wants you to do. That's number four I give you now. Number five. In number five, if you're going to use the anointing effectively, use the weapons that are suited to your age, to your background, to your training, to your experience. You know, David, he was a shepherd boy. And what did he know to use? A sling and a stone. He thrown it at the birds and thrown it at the animals. That's what he knew to use. And therefore he went and he went to take the stones and his sling. That's what he was used to. If you are going to make use of the anointing, don't copy anybody. Don't say this also and so does it. This also and so does it. You will make sure you do something suited to your age 
and suited to your experience and suited to your background suited to your temperament and suited to the calling of god upon your life number six now you know that man young david he picked up how many stones how many stones five he needed only one what lesson is that teaching you be adequately prepared oh just because you need one stone doesn't mean you only have one stone be adequately prepared. You are going for a crusade or you are going for a program somewhere and you take your sling, take more than one stone and read your Bible and look at the promises all over again and be adequately prepared and get more stones than you will need. You will get eventually there. You may discover that all you need is just one stone to throw at Goliath and that has done the job. But it's all right for you to have prepared fully and to have gone beyond actually what you needed. Number seven is your language. Now, David's language was a language of faith and it was a language that released the power it was the language that rendered the anointing effective. It was the language that defeated Goliath. They said, you come to me, you will staff and will stay in your hand, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. You have defied the, the Lord and uh, the King of Israel. And then I'm going to show you today that there's no other God in any other place except God in Israel. If you will do this, the anointing will work in your life. And then we come to point number three very quickly. Approved of God by miracles, signs, and wonders. Approved of God by miracles, signs, and wonders. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Acts 2, 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words jesus of nazareth a man approved of god that's all we need approved of god when god appoints number one he anoints number two he authorizes number three he approves number four Therefore, if you make sure that the Lord has appointed you the Lord appointed the father appointed Christ he appointed him as the one to be the Christ, the Messiah, the one that will take away the sins of the whole world. And he said he was happy with him. Make sure that you have been appointed. And no problem. First of all, you are born again. You are adopted into the family of God. Not only that, you are accepted in the beloved. And now the appointment comes. He appoints you to be a worker. Don't take it to mean that the state of Asia put me there, my national of Asia put me there, or the general superintendent put me there. The Lord appointed you. And now that you are appointed to represent the Lord and to do something, the appointment will not just remain empty. The Lord must back it up with something else so that you will be able to fulfill the role he has appointed you for. That's why we talk about the anointing. He appoints then he anoints you will go to the lord you will say lord like solomon that see the work you have given me to do i'm just a child i do not have the ability to do all these and then the lord will say what do you want and solomon said give me wisdom and understanding and the lord gave him you know why because he had been appointed to do something and the lord will need to anoint him to fit into the appointment it's very simple you have been appointed to do something in your state in your nation in your region in your local government or district because of that appointment there must be an anointing that will follow and then after you have been given that anointing you know the authorization is there he has authorized you and he has given you the name the name that's above every name, the rest now is for the Lord to be confirming your word with signs following and to approve your ministry with miracles, signs, and wonders in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16 and in verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them. The Lord will walk with you. 
confirming the word with signs following. Confirming the word with signs following. The Lord has commissioned you. And after this week, you will go back to the locations where God has put you. He will confirm the word of your mouth. And when you preach, people are going to repent. They are going to get saved. Believers are going to be edified. Don't worry about being a stammerer. Maybe you are a stammerer. No big deal. Moses was. Even the people that could speak more fluently than Moses, they didn't have any approval more than Moses. Once God has appointed you, it doesn't matter the physical shortcoming. It doesn't matter the stammering. It doesn't matter the lack of education. The appointment is what counts. You have been appointed, you have been anointed, you have been authorized. And as you go forth, he will approve your ministry in Jesus' name. And remember, when you go out, you go out with the name of the Lord. And that name, it will work. I said it will work. Yeah. Now what you are going to do when you go back, you've been in the boat for a long time. And here is Jesus walking on the water. And then as he's coming, oh, you say that's a spirit. Only a spirit can do that. That's what we say when we think of signs and wonders. Only some special people can do that. Extraordinary people can do that. And then you become afraid as they were afraid. And then Jesus said, be not afraid, it's me. And Peter said, is that you really? If that's you, tell me to come to you on the water. I don't know why he said that, but I'm happy he said that. If you had been there, if you had said that, I mean you now, at your level, at your age, if you were in that boat, and you had seen Jesus, and you had been afraid with the rest of us, if you had said that same thing to Jesus, Jesus would have told you the same thing. He would have told you, come, on one watch, only with four letters, that he primary one child can spell, come, on that watch, that simple word that we don't need dictionary for, on that word that we don't need the uh, theology to explain, on that single word, very simple message, you will come out of that boat, you will put your leg on the water, you will walk on the water. If you had been there, you would have done that. You are not there, you are here. You can do it now. Because the Lord is saying, I am doing it. Are you not my disciple? Are you not one of my children? Have I not appointed you, authorized you? Come. He goes, hasn't he done that? He has authorized you. That as you go, use his name. And he said, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. He will approve your ministry with signs and wonders. Just speak it out. Just say it out. If you will say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and you will not doubt in your heart, but you will believe that those things which you have said will come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. It's so simple, don't make it complicated. It's so simple, and it's for you. It's for you. This is your day. This is your time. There's a lot of work to do. I cannot go everywhere. I can't be in too many places in one single year. But the same anointing here, the same anointing is upon you. The same authority is with you. And the same approval that God has given for those he called in Matthew chapter 4, that same approval he gives to the people, that same authority he gives to the people, he called in Matthew chapter 9. It's there with you. Believe it. It's there what you don't doubt. Believe it.
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you a child of God? The work you are doing for the Lord, was it, do you believe the Lord wants you to be doing it? Has he appointed you? Do you know that you will never appoint anybody without giving anointing to back up the appointment? Do you accept your anointed? I said, do you accept your anointed? Are you authorized to use the name of Jesus? Now we're going to pray two prayers. First of all, since the anointing of the Lord is upon you, and there's no doubt in my mind, sickness, infirmity, should not make your body a home. Do you understand? So, first of all, we're going to pray. You who carry the anointing of the Lord, with the appointment of the Lord. And you have been authorized to go and destroy the works of the devil. How is it you that should be destroying the works of the devil? Then the devil will turn around and then be destroying you. It should not happen. And it will not happen again. Please listen. Many, many years ago, John G. Lake was in South Africa and uh, there was something that you know came out uh, you know people were just dying and John G. Lake was uh, ministering to them praying for them getting them healed getting them delivered and the doctors who were helping the people you know they were the people were just dying it was a terrible plague that came at that time and they called John G. Lake, they said, please, John G. Lake, we respect your ministry and we love you. We, we don't want you to get involved too much in this thing because these germs, they are very much contagious. They get on you and you will get this thing. And uh, you may just catch it and you will die. And John G. Lake said, that's impossible. Because John G. Lake said there was an anointing upon him. That if those germs killing the people, if they were to come in contact with his body, at that moment, all the germs will die. And the doctors said, you know, doctors will not take that from anybody because they go and they walk by microscope and instrument and sight. But this man was operating by the spirit. And so he said, you can test it. And so there was somebody dying. You are foaming in the mouth, and then they brought that thing, and they collected it with the instrument, and put it in the palm of uh, John G. Lake. When they put it in the palm of John G. Lake, before that, they looked at it with the microscope. The germs were very, very active and alive. Immediately, it came upon the hands of John G. Lake. All the germs and their millions, they died. And that same anointing is upon you now. That's why I say any germ, any virus, any sickness, any pain, anything that comes upon your anointed body, everything will die up tonight in Jesus' name. Therefore, you will raise up your hand now and you lay the other hand upon yourself. Are you not the temple of God? What's the infirmity finding there? Sickness finding there? And then you have to be going to... You are a minister. You should be doing more than those doctors are doing. Those strange elements have no right to come on your body. Upon the anointed of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight because we know you are a great God. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for the realization we have tonight. We are the anointed people of God. We are the appointed, authorized people of God here tonight. In Jesus' name. 
we are supposed to go out and destroy the works of the devil. And therefore those things they do not have any right to come and destroy the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore I command now, every germ, every virus, every infirmity, every disease, every sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you touch your children. All my brothers, all my sisters, everyone in the house, everyone outside, everyone in the near the gate, anywhere in this compound. Oh Lord, I pray right now. All those strange elements, they have no right to be on the body of the children of God. I command you, get out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, touch your people. Break the yoke. All those evil personalities, oh Lord, how can it be a daughter of the Lord, somebody married to the Lord Jesus Christ, covered in the blood of the Lamb, anointed by the Holy Ghost, that a tiny evil spirit, personality, will come upon such an individual and oppress and even try to even have a kind of immoral something this is blasphemy it must not be it should not be it will not continue all those evil personalities i command you right now these are the daughters of the almighty god these are the sons of the almighty god pack your load and go in jesus name lord i pray that you cleanse your people that all the sicknesses and infirmities that have come to defile their body that lord you take the defilement away and you send away those afflicting evil spirits uh, tormenting your people in jesus name i pray lord in their blood system in their body from top to bottom they will be free from every form of sickness heal them now make them whole cleanse them completely make them healthy that no one will remain with infirmity or sickness and lord i pray for some of your children that when they were in the world or when they backslid or whatever happened they got this thing that is killing the egyptians HIV or AIDS but when somebody comes to the city of refuge you say that the man slayer will not have any right on that individual anymore they have come into the city of refuge and I pray O oh Lord that any kind of sickness any kind of infirmity whatever the name may be that they say will terminate life or is incurable as they come to this city of refuge, as they come to the kingdom of God, under the banner of the blood of the Lamb, I pray, O oh Lord, all those diseases, take them away from their bodies in Jesus' name. They will not die. They have eternal life. They have abundant life. A healthy life. Do something in their lives, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, they will enjoy complete healing Amen. complete health Amen. they'll never be the same again Amen. you will fulfill the number of their days Amen. thank you a lot for the answer in jesus name we pray amen, amen. now uh, uh, we have already prayed for you now and no sickness has a right to remain there anymore but now, you are ministers. You have to go out now and deliver other people. Do you know that will happen? Yes. Now you will raise up your hand. Not for yourself now, now for your congregation. Now for the people in your community. And I've tried to make it simple tonight so that, uh, you know, you'll be helped. And I believe that all that you have heard will become a reality in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
you are a wonderful God. My brothers and sisters, I raise up their hands on behalf of their congregations. And there's a suffering world in the countries where they come from, in the states where they come from, in the regions where they come from. You need more than one apostle, more than one Elijah, more than one Moses, more than one minister. And Lord, not just one person cannot do everything. One state of Asia cannot do everything. One uh, national of Asia cannot do everything. You need every one of us. Therefore, Lord, I pray that a greater, mightier anointing will come upon all my brothers here tonight, will come upon all my sisters here tonight, and you will use them mightily in Jesus' name. They believe you already. And you have said, These signs shall follow them that believe. I pray that for every one of my brothers, every one of my sisters, here tonight, whether in the halls or halls 8, 9, and 10, or outside, I pray that something definite will come upon them right now. The definite, tangible manifestation of the power of God. And Lord, as they pray for the sick, the sick will recover in Jesus' name. They will cleanse the lepers in Jesus' name. They will cast out devils in Jesus' name. They will raise the dead. Lord, I pray, as those 35 teams went out, and all the 35 teams, 2, 2, 2, making 70, came back, and they gave testimony. All these brothers and sisters, as they go back to their local government, go back to their provinces, go back to their regions, go back to their states and their nations, they will come back and give testimonies. Yeah. Evil spirit will run away because of them. Yeah. Sicknesses will be healed through them. Yeah. Extraordinary things will be done through them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Confirm their ministries or signs following. Let there be an approval upon them, yeah. upon their ministries, yeah. that the stories we're hearing here in Nigeria, like my brother gave before I preached, those same stories will be hearing as your people go out to minister. Yeah. That hunchback disappearing will multiply. Yeah. That rotting legs getting cured will multiply. Yeah. Cancer vanishing away will multiply. Not only through the men, but through the women as well. Through the old and through the young as well. And I pray that the anointing your people have received, they will not allow criticism, fault finding, fear of man, or feebleness in their faith, they will not allow anything to hinder them. From this very month as they go back, extraordinary things great exploits will be happening through every one of us lord we pray for those who have had this anointing before and they have been operating in the will of the lord the anointing will increase your power will increase for every one of us here as our days so shall be our strength send us out like a mighty army that Satan will be defeated before us. Sicknesses will be healed before us. Use every...